Now let's talk to the the man and woman in the street, Doctor Sacred. They've they've listened to our our discussion, and they're like, okay. So what are the simple things that I should do if I would like to slash my risk of developing cancer? And indeed, what can I do for my family to decrease their risk of cancer? What about my friends, my, my loved ones, my neighbor across the street? Just basic things that you need to stop doing or start doing that are going to have a tremendous effect, effect on lowering your risk of developing cancer. Yeah, well, I, I think... Um since we know uh, what causes cancer, uh, we would try to avoid the, the risk factors that, that cause cancer. And uh, I think the single, singular biggest thing is um, uh, ultra processed carbohydrates in the diet, okay? Which is everywhere. Um, you know, I heard that from Ireland, uh, you know, the Subway sandwiches, right? Subway sandwiches. They looked at the Subway bread, the bread on the sandwich, and the Irish deemed that it cannot be called bread. The level of sugar in the bread was so yeah. high, they had to call it a confessionary. Yes. And it's like putting uh, meat between two donuts. You know, uh, mm -hmm. um, this stuff is, go is going to kill you. Now, not to say that if I eat a Subway sandwich, uh, I'm going to die. No, of course not. Um, it's like how frequently you do this. And what does it do uh, to your basal metabolic rate? What, what does it do to your BMI, your, 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 your size? Um, what does it do to your blood sugar levels? Uh, so, so, you know, there was an interesting paper published within the last few months with the Mediterranean diet, where they looked at like 40,000 people over 10 years or whatever. And they found that their obesity, cancer, and dementia were significantly reduced by a Mediterranean diet. It wasn't the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet did not have highly processed carbohydrates in it. Right. It was the absence of the things that cause all these problems. So if you can avoid, uh, and exercise is extremely important. You know, this is a, <clears throat> a, a and the problem, the problem is this, these foods are so tasty. Uh, don't get, listen, I had a, uh, it was last year, I had a McDonald's, hamburger uh, for the first time in like three years because the kids were upset. They needed some food. We had to get off the highway. The only thing there was a McDonald's. So I said to my wife, well, we'll get one of these things. I hadn't had one in like three years. I said, I ate this McDonald's. It was Sam so damn good. I was trembling while I was eating it. You know, <laughs> it's not It's not like they're, not, they're making it so you can't eat it. Uh, the best things that you like are, uh, and, and uh, you know, not to say that, you know, a McDonald's hamburger is ever going to kill you. Of course not. But the problem is it's the constant barrage on your body of highly processed carbohydrate foods clearly is the number one risk factor for dementia, uh, cancer, uh, diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disease. Almost all the major chronic diseases are coming from what we're eating, right? I mean, not hard, but it's, it's the eating the stuff that we love the most. And it's also cheap relative to healthy stuff. So, uh, you know, folks that may not have a, a means and they're living hand to mouth. I mean, this may be the only nutrition they get and they put themselves at risk, unfortunately. And uh, they have all of these kinds of pro problems. It's not. So it's really our society, our Western civilization. The evidence is so overwhelming. You know, uh, cancer comes because we're the ones eating. And as I said, the pharmaceutical company and the federal government are not forcing us to eat high carbohydrate foods. That's true. They might, do, they might do a better job at letting us know the hazards. They certainly let us know about smoking, yes. right? <laughs> but um, someone eating, engorging themselves on hamburgers is not putting you sitting next to that person at risk for getting diabetes, where secondhand smoke could. Therefore, the society went into a big thing cut down secondhand smoke. We stopped smoking. We made it, um, uh, uh, you know, we, put, we, we, we made it un, uh, un, 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 not right to sit and put someone else's life at risk. Yes. Um, however, when you consider the burden on our healthcare industry and the very lifeblood of this country going into taking care of people uh, that have abused themselves uh, by eating all this stuff, uh, all that billions and billions of dollars going into cancer, 
diabetes, cardiovascular disease. Think if we put that into education, roads, the military, all kinds of things that would benefit our society. And yet we're throwing it into people who, who are, are no fault of their own, uh, just driven to eat all this crazy stuff. So, so it's a societal thing. People just need to be aware of it. I'm not telling people don't eat uh, McDonald's and donuts and Subway sandwiches and all that. Just know that there is a risk in doing that all the time and not exercising. If you're not exercising, you're sitting around on the computer, you're going to get fat, you're going to get demented, and you're going to get diabetes, and you're going to die earlier than, the, than other people who don't do that. Another thing in the modern diet that there's just there was no, none of it, zero, is industrialized processed vegetable seed oils, canola, yeah. soybean. In your research and in your reading, have you seen a connection with the inflammation that I believe is caused by the industrially processed vegetable seed oils and well, I, I, rates I, I of think, cancer? Yeah, well, I don't know enough about that to speak to because I haven't done any studies on seed oils. So I, I don't, you know, our job is to kill off cancer cells by depriving them of their fuels. Um, you know, I'm not looking into whether eating seed oils gave you the cancer in the first place. All I know is if, if it's the highly processed carbohydrate foods, uh, maybe seed oils can make them worse. Uh, I, I don't know, uh, but certainly it's not going to be, in my mind, the number one issue. Uh, not to say that they're they're healthy, they're not they're unhealthy. I mean, you can cook and fry a lot of a lot of stuff in these oils, uh, which probably aren't the best thing for you. But if you have that blood sugar elevated, uh, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna it lead to systemic inflammation. Seed oils may push that a little bit further. I don't know, but um, gotcha. But but you know, how many people? How, how are you gonna chug a bottle of seed oil? I mean, give me a give me. I mean, I don't know what people are doing out there. You know, I don't eat seed. I mean, it's a, maybe fried foods are in seed oils, right? But, uh, you know, it's just it's just these kinds of things. I got you. So your number one recommendation for just the average man and woman walking the street, if you want to slash your risk of developing cancer, you need to eliminate highly processed carbohydrate food. And, or uh, not eliminate them, but uh, significantly reduce them. Gotcha. And then what about your overall carbohydrate intake on a daily basis? Would you recommend a low carb diet, a ketogenic diet on a daily basis to reduce the risk of cancer? Well, I think, as I said, like you said at the beginning, the, what did the aboriginals do? They never got cancer. So they never had any high car highly processed carbs. That's their society. Every time you turn the corner, we got a, a, a fast food store on the corner. Uh, it's convenient. It's easy. Think about what we're doing today. We're all on the run. We're sitting yeah. in traffic. How many millions of our yeah. of our citizens are sitting in traffic, uh, not exercising, and they run home? Uh, the kids are in school all day. The husband, the wife, they're both working. What are they going to do? Sit down and say, "Okay, let's go out in the backyard and slaughter that goat." We're going to have him tonight. No, no, no. <laughs> right? right. And so, what I do when yeah. I'm the yes, we got DoorDash now. They even come to you. They drop the food yeah, off. Absolutely. Of but you know what? The the customer is in charge of what they actually put in their mouth. And so when yeah. I when I'm in a pinch and I go by McDonald's, I'll get six or seven of the quarter pound hamburger patties and then some of the zero carb mustard. Yeah. That's what I eat in a pinch. I never eat the fries or the bun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the fries and the buns that make it so good, though. <laughs> For some people, yeah. But you know what? What what tastes better to me than eating the fries and the bun and the sugar laden ketchup? Yeah. Not having cancer. That tastes better yeah, to well, me long term. You know, people all roll the dice. You know, we're all hoping we never get cancer. It's yep. just the way life is, man. You, you, you're just going to, oh, all of a sudden I got cancer. Now what am I going to do? Now that's where our metabolic therapies come in. Uh, to take care of it, bring your bring your body back into a state of a homeostasis, and and, uh, and try to try to beat it naturally. Uh, I've seen so many people do so well; uh, it, they seem to go down the tubes big time when they get all that radiation and chemo uh, and all this crazy stuff that we're doing to these folks. Um, when when I'm not saying we eliminate all that stuff completely, but but man, I, I tell you. I, I just think there's other ways to go about doing this. I wish the establishment would recognize the science supporting what I'm saying. Absolutely. What would be your number two and number three recommendation other than get rid of the highly processed junk, mm -hmm. eat a low carb diet? What's number two and number three? Well, I mean, exercise for sure. I mean, we've got to get back to our, our, uh, our, our species did not sit around all day. I mean, if you're hungry, you have to go out and get your food. 
you know, DoorDash did not exist in the Paleolithic times. <laughs> so, so there was a lot of uh, uh, work and energy, the fires. Uh, I mean, it was just energy. We had to, we had to uh, do things. Today, as I said, we're a lot of couch potatoes sitting in traffic, sitting in front of a computer. Uh, you you got to you got to get uh, and, and the stress that's coming from this constant visual bombardment, uh, people walking around with the headphones. You know, um, uh, we, we evolved to be in nature all the time. Uh, we, we heard things. We saw things. Our, our brains were geared for an environment that was oftentimes hostile, whether whether it was going to be an animal or one of your own members of a species trying to kill you. You, you, you were always in an environment where you needed to be aware. Otherwise, you're going to be food for something else. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I always tell my students, when, if you're going to put headphones in, do it when you're studying or relaxing. Don't be running around uh, outside. These kids get run over. Uh, they, 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 they're in a different world. And even though their environment, they're depriving their brain of the very stimulation that we evolved to have to be who we are today. So, uh, um, you know, it's just... A lot of it's just common sense, man. I, I don't yeah, know what else to say. <laughs> One final question. Um, in the ketogenic community, when you say things like, oh, cancer loves sugar, okay, mm -hmm. and it's going to thrive and metastasize if you're eating a high sugar diet, I always get, especially on Twitter, some smart ass always comes back and says, well, there are cancers that can live on ketones and fatty acids. And I oh. love your opinion on that. I tried it. We do. We've been we've been busting our ass trying to find a tumor cell that can live on fatty acids and ketones. That here's the situation: when those when those guys publish those papers, they give them ke uh, fatty acids and ketones, and oh, the tumors look like they're growing. And what else do those tumor cells have access to? Glucose and glutamine. Okay, oh. there is no one out there that has shown me a cell that can live on fatty acids and ketones without any glucose or glutamine in the environment. We so in the studies, yeah. they were giving them ketones and fatty acids, but they also had access to glucose and, and yes, glutamine. absolutely. That seems absolutely. a little disingenuous. Yeah, well, they didn't know. They don't know. They don't know that the glucose and glutamine are the fermentable fuels. So, and not only this, listen to this, Ken. Fatty acids are very interesting. So when, when cells like the brain take in fatty acids, they actually uncouple. That's why we don't burn too many fatty acids in our brain because uncoupling causes heat. We have a skull that will keep heat inside. We'll get heat stroke. So the brain doesn't burn very much fatty acids. It burns glucose and ketone bodies. But other tissues can burn fatty acids. But if you give a lot of fatty acids, fatty acids cause mitochondrial uncoupling, okay, which, which leads to heat. And when you uncouple, mitochondria, automat the cell uncoupled will suck in more ferment fermentable fuels. So the fatty acids themselves are not in eliciting cancer. They help the cancer cells get more fermentable fuels, which makes it look like the fatty acids are doing it. They can't. You show me some guy who has a cell. I've been looking. I, I, I busted the ass of my students here. Find me. A, we look over, we're interrogating all these cancer cells. Okay. Let, okay. You put them in glucose and glutamine. They're fine. You take out glucose and glutamine, they croak. Then we go through all the different fuels that they, we can see what they can rescue. No, fatty acids and ketone bodies cannot rescue a cell in the absence of glucose and glutamine. So to, just to sum that up, there is no known cancer cell line that can thrive and metastasize on ketones and fatty acids. In the absence of glucose and glutamine. I think we're going to end on that note right there. I, that That is a grand slam if I've ever heard one. Dr. Safery, thank you so much for taking the time to do this.